Hey, welcome to Student Ministry That Matters. I'm Ben Trueblood. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the most difficult things of 2020. So let's be honest. You're probably tired of hearing about how difficult 2020 has been, and I know that I am, but the reality is that it's truth. It has been difficult. And even if you haven't experienced any personal hardship during this year or during this COVID season, you've probably been connected to people that have. Uh, and student pastors, I know for certain that you've had changes in your ministry and in your community, maybe perhaps even in your home or in schools that your kids are going to and definitely that your students are involved in that have made things really challenging. And so while we're tired of hearing about, hey, this is a difficult season, it's just true. And you've faced some serious challenges this year that people ha before you haven't had to face. So in a normal season, it's hard to have an attitude of thankfulness. Well, let me change that. Let me, let me personalize that. I struggle with maintaining an attitude of thankfulness. And I wonder if any of you are like me in that. And that's in a normal season. Well, this is a really challenging season and even more difficult to maintain an attitude of thankfulness. But in the difficulty, if we can find time to orient our minds and our hearts towards thankfulness, it can be an anchor for our soul. And here's what I've learned about thankfulness. And this is coming from someone who has to work at this, not somebody who has it all figured out. Like I said, I struggle with maintaining this attitude. And here's one of the things that I've learned is that you need to pause in order to truly experience thankfulness, to, to not just say thank you, but to really dwell on the things that you have to be thankful for. It takes a pause. One of my favorite movies of all time uh, and a quote from one of my favorite personalities in that movie Ferris Bueller from Ferris Bueller's Day Off used to say in that movie, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And that's the principle here. Life does move fast. And in this season, you've had a million things flying at you in terms of leadership and family and community and even the world. And we have to learn to pause. We have to learn to stop, to put away the distraction, to practice the healthy discipline of silence and solitude. Richard Foster writes about it in his book on spiritual disciplines, the importance of silence and solitude and how it's something that is lost at the time of his writing of that book and is certainly even more so lost in our time today. We have to learn to pause. And in those moments, focus our minds and our hearts on thankfulness. The second thing about thankfulness that I wanna make sure you get in what I think is one of the hardest things of 2020, and that's being thankful in the middle of such a difficult year. And that's that thankfulness adjusts the orientation of our hearts. As you get to that place where you're able to spend time focusing on thankfulness, it doesn't make the, quote, bad feelings go away. And perhaps in another video and with someone who is much more qualified to have this conversation than me, there's certainly a case to be argued for sitting in the bad feelings and allowing yourself to process even those. There's something really healthy to do. Again, that's for another time. But it, as you sit in that thankfulness, it doesn't make those, quote, bad feelings go away. But what it does is it helps orient your heart towards Jesus. Now, here's something that because we have faith, we'll never really understand in the moment. And you may not understand what Jesus is doing right now. You may not understand what he's doing in your life, around you. You may not be able to see again, because of the faith component of the Christian life, you may not be able to see what he's planning or what the finish line looks like of this situation. But we know that he is good, that he is good. 
And as Christian people, even in a tumultuous world, and sometimes especially in a tumultuous, tumultuous world, being thankful brings our minds to Jesus and the active role that he's playing in our world. And yes, student pastor, in your life and in mine. He is not far away. He is active. And when we orient our minds and focus on thankfulness, it orients our hearts towards him. Thankfulness also adjusts your vision. Recently, I was driving one of my daughters to school, and it was one of those mornings, I'm sure uh, in most parts of the country, unless you live in perfect San Diego, where this probably never happens, most parts of the country, you experience this at least some point as the seasons change. It was one of those mornings where there was just enough chill to the air to cause the windshield of the car to fog over, but not cold enough to where it was frost and you just scrape it off. And it was really difficult to get the inside air of the car balanced with the outside air. And so the window just stayed fogged up. And it didn't matter what dials I turned, it just continued that. By the way, if you know how to fix that, how to unfog your windows when they just won't unfog, then leave a comment. I would love to read it and I would love to improve my ability to clear the windshield. At any rate, I was driving uh, my daughter to school. And it was one of those mornings, like I just described, where the window was completely fogged up and we were driving into the sunrise because she has to be at school so early in the morning. And I couldn't see a thing. So I did what any safety-minded dad driving their daughter to school would be. And I rolled down the window and stuck my head out of the car window and drove that way until my windows became unfogged. And Here's what I noticed. It's pretty simple, actually. You can't see through a fogged up window, but when you roll down your window and you hang your head out the window, you can actually begin to see. And you can see clearly, and you can see all of the things around you that you need to see. A long season with a lack of thankfulness fogs our vision. It blinds us to what's going on around us, in us, and sometimes even through us. Now, if I had to wager, this is where I would say many are today. Right now, you might even be in this place of foggy vision. And I'm not specifically talking about the vision that we talk about in terms of leadership, though sometimes we can have foggy vision there too. No, here I'm talking about the foggy vision to see ourselves and the people around us. See, pausing to be thankful will help you hang your head out the window to be able to see maybe some things that you need for yourself to take steps to be a more healthy person individually. It allows you to see the people around you and how to love and care for them in an effective way. And it allows you to see your ministry, the ways that you need to lead and the ways that you need to pastor. And once your head is hanging out the window, make sure that you stay there a while. Because I'm willing to bet as your mind focuses on thankfulness and you pause, as your heart orients towards Jesus, as you begin to see clearly away from the fog that a lack of thankfulness brings, I'm willing to bet that you'll see some blessings inside of 2020 that you didn't even know were there. I hope that you can find time to press pause and focus on thankfulness. It's one of the most difficult things to do in 2020, but so necessary because of the sole anchor that it can be. As you do this, I would love to hear in the comments below some of the hidden blessings that you've found in your life and some of the things that you've been thankful for. So make sure and leave those in the comments. Subscribe and like on your way out. Thank you for watching.